when we had last left the tarnished. They found themselves back at Lando once more, a place that had now changed irrecoverably after the ignition of the great super prime golden erd tree. Yes, its limbs and ash littered the entire area, changing it and altering it and making it, I don't know, actually kind of <laughs> making there not be a lot of stuff to explore. They went into a hole, they climbed up a ladder, they found a body and the map was wrong. Finally, they faced Gideon Ofnir. Yes, Gideon had decided to turn coat against the Tarnished in order to prevent another, er, a Tarnished from rising to the throne of Elden Lord. It simply could not be done, according to Gideon. But now, Gideon was slain, and it was time to proceed up closer to the Erd Tree, closer to the throne. This is Elden Ring. We'll come back. Let's do it. All right. Let's see. How do we get up there again? <laughs> Over here, right? Go up this this route you want, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Shit. Right? Oh, look. This is here now. Or er, again. Still. Can you interact with this thing? No, okay, this is how you would have normally gotten up here. Right. And now it's all... Well, you can still kind of navigate on it. Look, you can go over here. That one, no dice. But over under this? You kind of can. Is there a reason to do this? There absolutely is not. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I guess at least we can get a good look at uh, where the branches broke. Doesn't look too impressive, though. Okay, let's head on up here to what does look very impressive. The weird, magically burning Erd tree. It's on a slow burn, you know? It's getting turned into... the world's biggest piece of charcoal. <laughs> Alright. If you grill with that, oh my gosh. You're not gonna be tasting the meat. You're not gonna be tasting the meat. You're not gonna be tasting the heat. <laughs> I said meat twice. <laughs> but you're gonna be tasting a fucking alien! Some alien power! <laughs> God. Why did I fuck up with saying it twice? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright. So this... This is how we do it, huh? Okay, yeah. Good to go. Let's see what we got. Who was the first Elden Lord again? It's probably Godfrey, right? We haven't fought Godfrey yet. That's the missing link. Let there be joy. Seek fleeing. Let there be order. Good luck. Good luck, so to speak. Seek Lord. Okay. Is there actually going to be something in this room? Oh look, it has changed. There's an item now on top of this. Yeah, this was such an odd room before. Okay. Well, what's up here? Oh, you know what? This is a gigantic half bowl top, isn't it? This is the top of a gigantic half bowl. Erd tree heel. Hmm. Okay, let's read all about it. Vastly heals HP for self and nearby allies. Faith of 42. One of the ancient Erd Tree incantations. Heals a vast amount of HP for the caster and nearby allies. Hold to continue and delay. The Erd Tree once flourished with abundance, yet it was only for a fleeting moment. Such is the course of all life. Yeah, maybe the Earth Tree was just coming to an end. To its, like, natural... Well, to its extraterrestrial end. If it only ever flourished once. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Weird. So does this mean the Erd Tree, like... Like, I'm gonna assume I am gonna become Elden Lord, right? Like, if they make another Elden Ring and it's set in the exact same place in the Lands Between, there... There ain't gonna be no big tree, right? If it's in the future? Unless it comes back. I don't know. I guess it's possible they could set it in a different place that isn't the Lands Between. But I'm not even sure what the nature of the Lands Between is, if it's like, you know... An afterlife or something. Seek critical hit. Summoning ahead, but don't you dare! Oh. What is this? Oh, Nefeli Lu. Okay. Ah, dastard. So to speak, why is it always tarnished? Oh yeah, look. There's two people up there. Oh, look, the... Wow, yeah, look. Thank goodness the door also somehow got burned open. Peculiar. Okay, in we go. Cutscene, yeah. Okay. Very hairy. Is it just a torso? It's been a long while, Morgoth. Oh, look, is that... He's in codger form. Huh. Long and hard didst thou fight. Tarnished warrior. Spurned by the grace of gold. Be assured the Elden Ring resteth close at hand. Yeah. <laughs> Alas, I am returned. Okay. Oh, no. To be granted audience once more. Damn. This guy looks like a fucking cut boss out of Sekiro. <laughs> Upon my name as Godfrey. Right. The first Elden Lord. So how, how did that work out? How are you here? Holy fuck. Oh shit. Oh shit. Whew. Slurp. Oh god, let me slurp! No! Slurping. Oh shit. Oh my god. What's happened to the ground? He took all the textures from the ground. He made it really low res. What is this fucking delay? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Jesus! He fucking Elden rung my ass. Oh my god, I dodged him by being- by having my fucking head down. Did you see that? I dodged two axe swings in a row. Oh no. That will be all. Thou didst me good service, Sirosh. Oh no, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna put it on his hand. <laughs> he's gonna put a lion onto his hand. <laughs> oh god. This is nasty. This is worse than his little brother or whatever his son I, who the fuck was godric or the grafted guy you know 
Oh shit. Damn, I've this motherfucker needs a maxi pad. Courtesy enough. <laughs> okay. <gasps> Fuck. Damn. Okay. Shit. Now I fight just horror loo. Oh, what? Warrior. What? How? Was that the cat? Shit, he's got grabbing hands. No! Oh, fuck! Oh my god! I survived. Okay. Was that... Huh! Oh. He's gonna do his... One-two maneuver. Shit. I'm so fucked. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Sure. Nice of them to put this right here, huh? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Here, should we change around our flask of power and strength? I think we should. Let's see. Mix the physique. Yeah, let's get rid of the poise boost in exchange for... I don't know. Maybe the one that deflects an attack or the heal over time. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for the heal over time. That one's nice. Okay. Good, good, good. Let's head on back up here. <sighs> well, phase one wasn't so bad. Phase two, we just gotta get down the dodging and all that. Okay. Do we get cutscenes again? Nope. Alright. Yeah, I'm just gonna pretend like I didn't see you naked just a few minutes ago. What's gonna happen? Oh shit. Get the AoE blast on that. Jesus. Oh my god! He waits like five million fucking years! He's the worst of them all! I'm just- next time he does it, I'm just gonna- if I- if I can read which attack it is, I'm just gonna attack. I'm just going to attack. <laughs> and then see if I can fit in a dodge afterward. I don't want to see you rip apart the ghost. Shit! He's- he loves to delay his shit. That's- that's his whole deal. <laughs> Good god! <laughs> he has such a peculiar canter. Oh! <gasps> wow, drinking saved me! Oh shit. Live by the slurp, die by it. <sighs> Oh shit, he just like exploded again. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Jesus. What is this swiping with your fingers? <gasps> is there another one? Thy strength befits a crown. <sighs> Remembrance of Horalu. Oh my god. Okay. 
What does that say? Interesting that we did not immediately get a cutscene for the end of the game. <laughs> I think there's going to be something else inside, I guess. Oh, right, we're going to fight Marika, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm dumb. I forgot what was revealed last time, that Marika is alive and that we will probably have to kill her. Okay. What the fuck am I looking for again? Yeah, the Remembrance. Remembrance of the warrior Horalu, hewn into the Erd Tree. So was it Godfrey or Horalu? The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. When Godfrey first Elden Lord was robbed of his grace, becoming tarnished, he took with him his kinfolk and left the lands between. After the long march of the Tarnished came to an end, Godfrey divested himself of kingship, becoming a simple warrior once more. So Horalu is Godfrey? He took on a different identity? Hmm. So then that means Nefeli Lu is... has... royal lineage has like divine blood or whatever, right? Has like alien power inside of her. Huh. Shit, okay. Let's get a level up here. We should probably go tell her about that. <laughs> you know, we should probably go tell her because isn't her dad is Horalu, right? Nefeli Lu. Okay, which is also, I guess, why that person wrote, Don't summon her. I wonder what would happen if you did. What does this say? Praise the tarnished. Ah, seed. I did it! Okay, let's go see what she has to say. Yep, she's still back here. Okay. Let's go on this way. <laughs> Damn. Still back here, huh? Alright. Old Godric or... Right? Godric the Grafted? Yeah. The body. Hey! I will remain to summon the your guy surely lie elsewhere. Damn, you really got nothing to say? Okay. That is wild. <laughs> Really feels like we should be able to say something there. <laughs> okay. Well, let us. Should we use up some of these rooms here? Maybe. Let's head on back this way. Good. I am expecting some shonky business, but I don't know. If it'll be, if we'll get outshonked by what awaits ahead, you know? Because apparently the shonkiest of them all was Melania. Alright. Elden Lord Crown. Why? Hey, why does it come with all the hair, too? <laughs> if this is the crown, is this supposed to have... Like, the hair of the last dude who wore it, too? Is that supposed to be there? Because that's a little weird. <laughs> Crown of Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. The age of the Erd Tree began amongst conflict, when Godfrey was lord of the battlefield. He led the war against the giants, faced the Storm Lord alone. And then there came a moment when his last worthy enemy fell. And it was then, as the story is told, that the hue of Lord Godfrey's eyes faded. Ah. Which is like the opposite of what happened to us. But I th feel like our eyes got bright because of eating dragon hearts, but maybe not. Okay. Huh. The Storm Lord. I wonder who the Storm Lord was. Because clearly they were held up in Storm Vale. Hmm. 
Armor of Godfrey. Is this a similar text? It is. Okay. Same. same. Buy all these. Good. All right. Well, you know what? Now we don't really even need to do much. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What have we got here? Ah, your colossal axe weapon. 42 strength, 14 dex. D and D on strength and dex. Axe of Godfrey. Weapon of Godfrey, Elden Lord. It was broken in a battle fought as leader of the Tarnished during the Long March. This weapon is symbolic of Godfrey's vow to conduct himself as Lord, as a Lord, later becoming an emblem of the Golden Lineage. In the days of the past, a crown was warranted with strength. Unique skill, Regal Roar. I wonder if that's enhanced by the other Roar talisman thingamajig. Let loose a mighty war cry, raising attack power while sending out a shockwave that cannot be guarded against by stomping the ground. While active, strong attack becomes a lunging slash. Ugh. Looks like a talon. Ash of War, Horaloo's Earthshaker. This Ash of War grants an armament the heavy affinity and the following skill. Horaloo's Earthshaker. Slam both hands onto the ground to violently shake the earth and unleash a shockwave. Follow up with an additional input to slam the ground again. Usable on all melee. Oh, okay. Sure. Another one for the collection. Okay, should we go over here and... We have a bell bearing, don't we? Let's contribute. There we go. Horns. Was there anything else here that we needed to purchase? I'm not too sure. Wow, there's a bunch of dead folks here. Okay, number held, all ones. We already bought all of Corrin's stuff, no new stuff. Okay. Nothing there. Okay, good. How about the baseline stuff from the grandmas? No, we bought all that as well. Hmm. I guess we could, like, spend money on boluses and whatnot. Should we do that? We could also buy some smithing stones if we wanted. Yeah, maybe we'll buy some. Just if in case, for the future. There we go. That'll do. Alright, now... Let's head on back over here. Elden Throne. Good, good, good. Do you think she'll show up here? No. That's so weird that she's not here. Nefeli Lou. It almost feels like... I don't know, maybe the... The story or something would have been more compelling if we were Nefeli Lou. Right? <laughs> you know, not necessarily that we are... That, like, literally the hero of the story is Nefeli Lou, but that, like... Our character, rather than just being tarnished, has the backstory of Nefeli Lu, you know? I feel like that would be more affecting, right? That would make the betrayal of Gideon more effective. That would make this more of an interesting battle, you know? Just have it to where it's like, you, d you don't even have to have the name Nefeli Lu, right? You just... You just have whatever name you pick, and you can customize your character or whatever, right? Because you don't know the other parent. Correct? Right? We never met Nefeli Lu's second parent. So... Yeah, it could totally work. That way you wouldn't be just a complete blank slate. I don't know. I kind of like that idea, but... Maybe there's reason to have it be a blank slate, that way there's more player agency. I don't know, but you're still afforded a lot. You know? I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of... Uh, well, I don't know. I guess maybe I just preferred in 
their past games, or in one of their past games, <laughs> just one, right? Because this this definitely follows the formula of their other stuff, where, um, you know, in, in all of the Dark Souls, Bloodborne business, you would just be a sort of nameless person who sort of rose up from whatever, as far as I can remember, right? You were just like... You just happen to be the chosen undead or something like that, right? It just so happened to work out that way. You weren't like anyone with a storied history or connective importance to existing characters in the lore. Uh, I don't know. Alright, well, let's go up here. See what this is. Probably have a boss battle with Marika. Try fleeing. Seek Lord down. Oh no, it's all burnt up. Still no mushroom! <laughs> Elden Ring ahead. Don't give up. Didn't expect I can't take this. First off, good luck. And then let there be victory. Is this a... Yeah, this is one of the fog doors, huh? It's very different looking, though. Good luck, oh good luck. This is quite the... Onslaught of bosses here, though, huh? We had, like, what, three of them back to back to back? Assuming this is a boss, it really feels like it's about to be a boss. I mean, look at this. Oh. Oh, this was in the pre-rendered cinematic banging on that there. E. How come you're all cracked up? Is Marika the Elden Ring? Oh, it's frozen in time. Ew. Or is this is this actually Radigan? Is Radigan still here? Oh yeah. Yeah, because of the red hair. Okay. Fuck! Jeez! You have a completely different pacing compared to. Oh, the other fucker! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> okay. So, Radigan is the Elden Ring. Because, look, it's like... It's his skeletal tissue. It's his skeletal infrastructure is the Elden Ring inside of him. So, when the Elden Ring was shattered, it was Marika shattering and killing Radigan. Or trying to. But then, like, weird time shit, I guess, froze it? Huh. Okay. Well, let us... How do we want to fucking handle this? Fuck it, let's, let's just go in and make some more mistakes. So then that's the big reveal, is that... Radigan is the Elden Ring. And Marika in some way... Why, why would Marika want to destroy the Elden Ring, though? And destroy Radigan? I guess maybe she saw through a whole bunch of stuff and was like, the power isn't worth it because we're, like, being fucked over by weird aliens from beyond. Is this the same thing? I don't remember the weird spiky spike there. 
I think it's the same thing, yeah. Okay. Thanks for giving me a chance to slurp. Shit. Okay. Oh, fuck. Uh. No! No! Oh, God! Fuck, this is the title screen music. <laughs> oh, shit. It's really good here. Oh shit, I'm so fucked. Oh, I survived somehow. I should have my holy magic mitigation equipped. Shit. Okay. Oh! <laughs> oh my god. Jeez, I'm Pete. Jeez! Jeez! Wow, there's not another phase? Or maybe upon death. Ugh. Like Malanga. Oh! Oh! Perfectly executed. Oh, yes, baby, yes! Eat a fucking butt! No way. No way. Unless this isn't the final boss. Oh, is this the alien's true form? What the fuck? Ew, it's a flesh weapon. <laughs> it looks kind of funny. <laughs> Oh no, don't look at that! It looks like that Pokemon, that grass type Pokemon. From like Gen 3 or something. You know what I'm talking about? Or was it Gen 2? It has a silhouette. <laughs> it looks kind of goofy. Elden Beast. Okay, yeah. Shit, it has draconic power. Oh, I'm getting roasted and toasted, baby. Oh, fuck. Oh, my gosh. This ain't no place for a slurping man. Okay. Ooh, it sounds like glass. <laughs> wow, that sounds so cool. Okay. Okay, is it gonna fly at me? Oh, it's gonna laser me, isn't it? Hyper beam! Oh shit, Elden Ring! <sighs> what does this mean? What does this mean? Where did it go? Oh shit! Fucking Beat Saber my ass! Jeez! <laughs> okay. Wow, look at all these trees. Oh, it's spreading its seed around the worlds, around the galaxy or universe. Are those other trees like this? Oh, fuck. 
So an Elden Ring 2 could be on a different fucking planet. Holy shit. If these are all on different planets... Holy shit, that's fucking buck wild. Okay. Should we use a... Rune Arc? Probably. There we go. Can I skip this? No. How about now? There we go. We know what's up. Shit. Okay. Oh. Good weapon choice, though. Using a hammer. Respect. Oh. I want to do that. I want to do that with my hammers. This motherfucker got the claw talisman for sure. I think I even dodged it, but it was a multi-hit attack. Oh, jeez. You do extra it. Now! Good shit. Yeah, the title music is fucking banging. It is fucking great. It's like the best song in the whole game. Okay. Alien time. Thou face my true form. Slurping. Uh -oh. Bring in the rain, right? Oh my god. Okay, so what do I do? Do I just get the fuck away from this? <laughs> okay, yeah, you just gotta get the fuck away from it. Gotcha. Powering up! Uh oh. This is gonna be bad. <laughs> okay. Donk. Oh, I can't see. No. Okay, good. this? What's oh, magic? Oh, I hit your hand. Is it going to fly to the skies? What's going on over there to the right? Uh-oh, this is a new power. New ability alert. Oh! Okay. Nailed it. Okay, flashbang. Sekiro style. Fireworks. I forgot to change out my talisman to holy mitigation. I'm a fool. We're doing it. We're doing it, though. We're doing it. Oh, shit. What is this one? Uh, Jesus. I'm gonna get blown up. Okay. Just powering through it. Sheesh, dude! Sheesh! Fucking A, man! Smack its special butt. Okay.
What is this? I have escaped thanks to its power of tail. Okay. Shit. Oh god. <laughs> Double slurp. One more, baby. One more! Did I win? Secret third phase. God slain. Elden Remembrance. Oh, shit. Oh. Got 500 grand. Ah, I did it. Time for order. Offer light. Behold, weak foe. Can I travel? No, I cannot. Okay. Oh shit, I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> I keep thinking it's a weapon. Okay, Elden Remembrance. Tell me some alien lore. Wow, there's hardly any lore. The power of its namesake can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. Alternatively, it can be used to gain a great bounty of runes. It was the vassal beast of the Greater Will, and living incarnation of the concept of order. Huh. Vassal beast of the Greater Will. So it is an alien, but it's just another alien from another planet that got attacked by the alien called the greater will right it took it over similar to what happened to guy with the the cock head or whatever it was <laughs> you know what I'm talking about the badminton guy I forgot what it was called the samurai dude who got taken over by Shabriri huh Okay. Weird. So do you think... Do you think Renala knew? That she was fucking an alien? Maybe that's why she was so into it. And that's why she was so horny just for Radigan, even though Radigan, like, left her. I wonder why Radigan left her. Maybe we'll find that in the final cut. We'll find out in the final cutscene or something. Why did Radigan leave Renala for Marika? Huh. E. <laughs> okay. Touch fractured Marika. What? Offer light. Okay. Behold weak foe. Yeah, all same, same. Oh, should I touch this grace? Do we need to touch it? Yeah. Whew. Very important. Now notice this. Summon Ronnie. Why not? Damn, Ronnie. Your hat get bigger? The battle is over, I see. Is she communicating with me telepathically? I think her hat got bigger. So this is Marika.
I do solemnly swear. Wait, are they the same fucking person? To every living being and every living soul. Now cometh the age of the stars. A thousand year voyage under the wisdom of the moon. Why are they all fucked Here, up in the exact same way? The chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond. Into fear, doubt, and loneliness. As the path stretches into darkness. Okay. Well then, shall we? My fair consort eternal. This is where you cue the... the cover song. A, co of, a trendy cover of... If you liked it, then you should have put a ring on it. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Okay. So was Marika, like, inhabiting the body of Radigan or something? Did they have two people inside of the same body? Like, one was possessing them, similar to, like we had said before with the samurai dude were they like fighting for control or something like did marika try to kill radigan but was unable to do that right was only able to get the job half done via the knight of black knives or whatever like somehow was like we all thought ronnie was pulling the strings but in truth was Marika pulling the strings that were pulling strings? Trying to kill Radigan after Marika found out that Radigan was an alien? But then, upon delivering the blow, the final blow or whatever, and shattering the Elden Ring, shattering Radigan, Marika got, like, absorbed into Radigan slash the Elden Ring, and they became one and the same? And they were, like, fighting for control or whatever, and that's why one was frozen in time or whatever. One was, like, like, Marika was holding Radigan at bay or something. Huh. I'm not fucking sure. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could fucking interpret that, I guess. Or maybe I'm just completely off base, but it seemed like the way that that was shot, it seemed like it was implying that they were in some way interlinked, but it may well have just been that they just spawned in the model there just for the sake of this scene, right? Like, oh, you've returned back to the reality of this area after slaying the Elden Beast, right? That could also have been what happened there. Huh. Wow. Well, this has been Elden Ring. Holy shit. <laughs> it's over. This is the end of it. Wow. A really long fucking game. Well, relative to their past ones, right? I'm not sure that I will do a new game plus. Certainly, I won't do it for the channel. Because it's, it's a really long game. Like we were touching on not too long ago. It, it really is quite lengthy. I don't know. Like, I do enjoy going through the levels and finding the bosses and everything, but it's... I don't know. <laughs> Toward the end, it definitely starts to feel like it, it wears on you, like it weighs on you, right? I definitely felt myself... And of course, this happens with all games when you're excited with them and they're just coming out, but I definitely felt myself sort of like slowing down with the recording process, right? And having less periods where like, 
oh, I'm not going to, like, early on when the game first came out, I was willingly like, oh yeah, I'm just going to record like four of these at once. That's how excited I am to play. And then it became a bit more of a normal thing where it was like, oh, I'll just record one this day, maybe two this day, or then one this day, and then I'll skip a day, and then another one the next day, something like that, right? But I think that's that's kind of a normal thing for all the games. Huh. But yeah, making it so huge, like we were touching on, it definitely exacerbates some issues that wouldn't have normally been there, right? Like problems, quote-unquote problems with the game begin to arise when it's like, oh yeah, normally I wouldn't mind missing optional content and stuff like that just by chance. And like, you know, New Game Plus, I'll just look everything up and do it that way. Because it's so easy to get back to that point and to do to redo stuff and like, or even here, see another ending, right? See a different ending. Like, what if I walked over to the the desecrated body, right? Or what if we had the, what do you call it? The Frenzy Flame at still active, you know? It becomes a much bigger ask to go through all of that when the game is like, even if you don't do everything, right? It becomes almost like roughly, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I don't truly know because it's so, it's so big. It's hard for me to recall what all was optional and what all you could do just by like beelining through the main storyline and fulfilling certain steps, and whatnot, right? But yeah, it makes it kind of painful when you miss out on side stuff, right? Like at Mount Gelmir, we missed out on a whole slew of shit in this playthrough because we just didn't know. And like I said before, in prior games, that would still happen, but it wouldn't be as, as crushing to the player because New Game Plus was like, you could just go through them, right? Like I said, with Dark Souls 2, I did several New Game Pluses. I think I got almost to like plus seven or did get to plus seven because that's just how quick that game was. Whereas this is like the complete inverse where it's like, holy shit, by the end, even though you enjoyed it, probably like if you're looking at another new game plus i don't know right like there's enough content in one playthrough to satisfy that sort of curiosity and whatnot right like rather than doing it myself and seeing the the prog or, and seeing through quest lines myself i'll just hit up a wiki or whatever right it's a big ask you know And that also, like I said, the length of it also makes it difficult to, like, for example, recall certain important things about, like, storyline, like, about the lore, which in and of itself has always been weird and esoteric and hard to keep track of, right? But now it's especially hard because there's just that much more going on, right? There's just that much more to keep track of. As far as secret areas that you want to return to at a later date, Right? It's that much harder to keep track of those places that you want to return to and other loose ends or even like before they even had in the NPC quest tracker thing, right? Not the quest tracker, but where NPCs were in the world. Imagine trying to keep track of that and going back and doing the cleanup that we did, right? That would be like near impossible without using a wiki or whatever, you know? Because there's just so much extra shit compared to like Dark Souls or Bloodborne. It's just making the game extra huge sort of unintentionally causes other problems to rise to the, the surface that you wouldn't even consider being there, right? But all in all, like I said, uh, not too long ago, in fact, I guess if you're just here for this one, probably the, my favorite exploration of any of their games. Uh, I still think I prefer the combat in Sekiro. It was just, you know, it was so finely tuned being able to balance it around like one move set balance the whole game around that it was just so tight but otherwise yeah the exploration was like the best of its kind in these sorts of games begin journey 2 if you did not start now you can choose to begin journey 2 later at the table of lost grace in the round table hold i don't want to begin journey 2 no i hope no was the one that was highlighted okay here we go because you know what We've got some items here. I want to look and see what the heck is up. 
Let's see here. Is there equipment? No. Yeah, so what do you offer? Marika's Hammer. Sacred Relic Sword. Stone Hammer made in the lands of the Newman. Outside the lands between. The tool with which Queen Marika shattered the Elden Ring and Radigan attempted to repair it. Yeah, so they were definitely fighting. They were at odds with one another. Hmm. The hammer partially broke upon shattering the ring, becoming splintered with rune fragments. Unique skill, Gold Breaker. Almost thought it said God Breaker. Leap up high and, while suspended in midair, imbue the rune shard with light before smashing it down hard onto the ground. The heroic Radigan's signature attack. Huh. Sacred Relic Sword? Oh, gross. This is the nasty sword. Sword wrought from the remains of a god who should have lived a life eternal. Thoughts on what the weapon portends are many and varied. Some consider it the mark of a great sin or a sign of great devastation. Some think it as the end of an age, while others the beginning. Unique skill, Wave of Gold. Imbue the sword with bygone golden glory, then fire it as it at fire it at foes. A wide golden wave fans out forwards, sweeping through all enemies caught in its path. Huh. Okay. Well, what kind of stats are- it is just a standard hammer. It does deal holy damage, though. D scaling on strength, dex, and faith. I wonder if all of them will get to A if you level it up. I don't really like the look of it, though. You know? It's not a big, chunky, thick-ass hammer, you know? The sword, also similar, deals holy damage, but only has E scaling on strength. It's a great sword, though. Okay. Neat. Let's go over here. Let's see. Hey, I killed a god. Now. Let's go smithing. Huh? Okay. Sure. <laughs> hey, you're back here. I see. No? Okay. Sure. Can we interact with the fingers at all? No. Grandma doesn't do much. Is there anyone else we should chat with? Maybe EG? Should we chat with EG? Let's see here. You know what else? It's gotta be said. The credits for this game were remarkably short and quick. Especially for how huge it is, you know? Well, my eyes walk. Oh, Blythe's death. Unthinkable. How could Blythe? How did he break free from his cell? No. More importantly, Blythe became a curse that plagued Lady Rani. Yet, even in madness, gave himself to her. I made a grave misjudgment. And I thought myself a capable war counselor. I'll catch up with you soon enough, Blythe. When I do, I only hope you'll accept my apology. Jeez. Okay. I don't really understand the full breadth of the situation with Blythe, though. I don't really understand what the fuck really <laughs> went on there. <laughs> okay. Sure. To be fair, we kind of missed a few... points. <laughs> you know, we missed a few interactions. Oh, how about Renala? How about we check in with Renala? Let's see. There we go. Hmm. 
Hey. Yeah, what's up with the egg, huh? The amber. <sighs> thou... Art thou now assured of the... No? Be not alarmed. Nor afeard. I would birth thee as... It is peculiar that Renala births Albinorix and whatnot, you know? And it just occurred to me, Renala has kind of a... Like something happened to Renala's legs, right? Given how she's sitting? How is it that she passes this on to the babies? Oh, unless they aren't actually like babies in the sense that we would first most understand, but more babies in the sense of like they're a clone. What if she's just cloning herself? Huh. Like all the Albinorics are just like imperfect clones of Renala. Because they all do have like her sort of like skin tone that's very like pale in complexion, you know? I don't know. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. I don't know. Well, this has been Elden Ring. <laughs> All right, let's go back and chill out with Santa while we're doing a few more closing statements. Honestly, the credits went by so quick, it kind of took me by surprise, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. I feel like we've kind of, we've touched base on pretty much everything, right? Uh, the game, super good exploration. A lot of wild shit sort of comes to the top because of just how huge the game is, right? Like, I do appreciate that, like, there's so much shit to see. But I almost, I'm worried just, I'm kind of concerned to say it, it overstays its welcome at some points. I'm not sure. But that may just be because I'm playing through it in a bit of a completionist sort of way. I don't know. But at the same time, I'll, I'll play other games and do them completionist style. Right? And I won't, I won't feel one way or the other about that. Right? I don't know. I'm of two minds about that. So take it with a grain of salt for sure. I'm not sure exactly where I rest there on that. But uh, certainly it does make it a whole lot harder to like parse information in the game when it's there's just so much game, right? And it makes it difficult to go back and redo mistakes and prior games that they've done. If you wanted to pursue a different path or do something differently or you messed up a quest line or something, you would be able to just restart, right? It wasn't too rough. Stuff like that is a much bigger ask now, right? I don't know how you can get the best of both worlds. I guess the way that you do it is you just have to give the player more ways to track information and make it clear when they're about to fuck something up. But at the same time, if you do that and make it clear to the player, like when they're about to screw up a quest line or something, to where like it's not going to be doable until another playthrough, right? Or you're committing to something that has multiple options and plays out multiple different ways with different rewards or different dialogue or whatever. Should you signpost that? I feel like that's how you solve that, but at the same time, by solving it that way and signposting all of these branches, right? I have to wonder, does that get rid of some of the mystique that from software games typically have, right? Because that is part of, like, at least in, in the older games and stuff, that was part of the weird fun of it, is going back, it is like making all these mistakes the first time through and whatnot, and just like not knowing everything, right? Having it all be kind of obfuscated. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, here's one final parting question to anyone watching this bit. If you have either watched this... Yeah, if you've watched this... <laughs> I think we've already heard from quite a few people, uh, from folks who have, like, never played a FromSoft game, who have watched this playthrough in particular, 
and been like, oh, you know what, maybe I will try it, right? Did you beat the game? Did you like it? How'd you feel about it? Are you going to go back and play any of the other ones? If you go, I do really, as much as I like the combat in Sekiro, Sekiro is significantly tougher than Elden Ring, right? I think Elden Ring is just by, by nature, like, is definitely the, the most accessible and easiest of them all, right? I mean, even by just doing regular completionist tendencies, you get over-leveled for stuff, right? As you can see. Yeah, and that's another issue, right? That's another thing that rises to the top because of the game's size, right? Another strange sort of facet of the game that arises that you wouldn't even consider otherwise. Because the game is so huge and you have such a breadth of optional content, it becomes super easy for the player to get over-leveled for important content, right? Whereas if you only have a few optional side areas and whatnot, or a few that you can realistically only get to in a playthrough, right? And you would have to go through another playthrough to see other optional stuff. Um, what it does is it makes it super easy for the player to get over-leveled, you know? Whereas you could still get over-leveled in, like, Dark Souls and Bloodborne and whatnot, but it was more difficult, right? Like, you actually had to grind at some points, I remember, in order to get over-leveled. And, um... It didn't happen as frequently, right? It's so easy in this, if you want to do everything in one playthrough, to just over-level yourself, right? It's so easy to do it. Like, I, like we're super-duper over-leveled, I think. I think. I'm, I'm like, 90% sure. We're at 175. With 500 runes right now. Here, let's just spend them. Let's see how high we end up getting. Probably get to at least 76, maybe 77. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. But, yeah, we've got all that. But not only that, but we could have farmed four runes if we wanted. I never actually farmed explicitly for runes. Every time I did end up getting runes from farming for an item, I just spent them. Right? I spent them on useless shit that I was never going to use. Which we did a lot, even when we weren't farming, right? Never was a magic-using person, or faith-using person. But, I bought all this shit, right? And eventually we got to a point where, like, if a vendor was selling something that had limited stock, I would just start buying that as well. Weapons and armor. And even in doing that, we still also have a shitload of additional runes just left over, right? And then we didn't even use the talisman. And of course we've got the remembrances, which you can use for runes. And then there's the talisman, which normally in Dark Souls and whatnot, I would always run with it active as soon as I found it. Let's see, what was it? It was the scarab one, wasn't it? Yeah, this one. Increases the runes obtained. Yeah, in like Dark Souls and Bloodborne and whatnot, games that had equivalents of this, I would always have it equipped. Right? I would always just keep leveling up as much as possible. Whereas here, it's super duper was not a necessity whatsoever. And in, in those games, it also wasn't a necessity. But you didn't ever feel like, holy shit, I really feel like I'm overleveled. Maybe you were overleveled, but you would the only way you would know at some point is if you checked like an online guide and someone was like, yeah, this is the recommended level for this. We feel like this is the, the ideal level or whatever, right? I don't know. It's just another weird facet of the game that sort of crops up because of it being so huge, right? And of course, in that sense, in the difficulty sense, in some ways, that made the game more accessible to new players, right? That made it to where the game was more approachable and more people decided to try out the game, which I would say is a good fucking thing, right? I mean, certainly, if I'm playing the game and I don't want to get over-leveled, if I go in knowing that, right, ahead of time, I can just, like, intentionally not spend my points, right? I can just lose them, or just walk around with a shitload, right? Which is a little bit of a weird thing to do, right? Because you're, <laughs> you're like, actively choosing not to engage with the game mechanics or whatever, right? But, eh. I don't know. Maybe the way that you do it... This is, this is more work for the development team, though. But the way that you do it is at least for new game, for regular new game, for just your first playthrough. Ideally, you have it for a new game plus as well. But similar to Sekiro, 
At the beginning of Sekiro, there is an optional hard mode. It awards you absolutely nothing. It is purely for the fun of doing it. And we did it in our playthrough. It is to where if you do not perfect parry, and when I say that, parrying works very differently from, from how it does in this game, in, uh, in Sekiro. Parrying is way more lenient. There's perfect parries and there's not so perfect parries. Because of course you, you only have a sword, so blocking, quote unquote, is also parrying in that game. But um, in Sekiro, if you had that debuff active, that optional item, it was optional hard mode. It was like the bell demon or something, the bell bearing demon or something like that. I think just bell demon. There was no bearings. But um, you had that active and it would make it to where if you didn't perfect parry stuff, you took a small amount of damage, not full damage, but a, a fraction of the amount of damage you would have otherwise taken. And you would still... Uh, take damage to your parry meter. To your posture or poise or whatever it was called. Your stance. You would still take damage to that. What if you did something like that in Elden Ring 2 or Elden Ring whatever? Right? Except instead of making it be like, oh, the combat mechanic is different. What if the game hard locks you to the recommended level for everything, right? You can't ever overcap yourself based on what bosses you have or have not beaten yet. Right? So in order to increase your level cap, you have to kill boss X or Y. What if that was how you did it? But that said, that's a lot of fucking work, especially when your game is fucking enormous. <laughs> right? Especially when your game is enormous and has a load of bosses, especially if you want to include, like, the optional small, like, pissant bosses in that. Then, holy shit, you've just, like, massively expounded that, that amount of already large amount of work. Right? It's such an interesting problem that has arised, right? It's so fascinating. I wonder if slash how they're going to resolve it, right? They may not even, right? Because obviously they don't need to. Like, people will still play the game and enjoy it, right, in the future. And I don't think it's that big of an issue. It would just be cool to see, like, if they tried to address it. If they had the, the ability and the time and wherewithal to do it, you know? You know, it's important to be realistic about development and all that, I think. Right, I feel like so many times players uh, begin to have unrealistic goals and ideas about how games get developed and like, you know, how people ultimately need to like put food on the table, so to speak. <laughs> right? In a perfect world, maybe the executives at a development company or whatever would be taking a little bit less fucking money in order for, for shit to, to kick around for a little bit longer as you would like, right? But unfortunately, <laughs> that is currently not the case, right? Huh. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. All right. Well, this has been Elden Ring. Wow. We're actually at the end of it. Holy shit. Unbelievable. Like I said before, uh, the whole Sekiro playthrough that we did, not only is it shorter than the Elden Ring playthrough, but it's two playthroughs. <laughs> Right? Let alone the fact that, like, Dark Souls and Bloodborne, I'm sure. Um, Dark Souls 2, I, like, fucking obliterated through it. I, I wanna... I'm curious what my Steam playtime is for Dark Souls 2. I'm pretty sure it's significantly less than Elden Ring. And my Dark Souls 2 playthrough is, like, several playthroughs. Right? Even accounting for the fact that, like, multiple playthroughs take you quicker or shorter amounts of time, right? Because you know where everything is. Um, it's still pretty wild to think about, right? It's still pretty wild. Important to keep that, that little fact in, into account, but it is wild. Alright. But yeah, I would love to see them build up more stuff for a sequel or DLC, right? Um, like I said, the open field, open world areas, like here, like Limgrave and shit, they kind of suck. Right? They're kind of mediocre. You know? I wasn't too impressed by them. Like, it starts out cool, but quickly loses its luster by the time you're, like, in Lyernia of the Lake. Or Lyernia, whatever the fuck. Or Altus Plateau. I feel like... Kaled gets around it by having such a, like, more directed overworld. Where so much shit is, like, barred from, from your approach. Like, you're not allowed to go certain places because the terrain is just so fucked up. I feel like that really adds to it. And you know why? 
because it builds on their strength as a development team, right? It builds upon their strength because what they're good at is doing all the structured shit, you know? The best shit in Elden Ring are like the legacy dungeons, which it never actually even refers to them as such in the game. But if you look in the guide, I'm almost positive it says it there. And certainly 100%, this is where everyone even got it from, is the pre-release trailers. But legacy dungeons like Stormvale Castle or like um, Redmain, you know? Places like castles and shit where you can't mount up, essentially. Or the Academy. Or Caria Manor. Or the Halig Tree. All of that. Right? Like, the Halig Tree is fucking awesome to explore. Right? Because it all lends to their, their best strengths. You know? Shit like Furumazula. All that shit is fucking amazing. But roaming around a lot of the open world, eh, sometimes it's it's not great. Sometimes it's it's very much just like it serves a purpose as as like dressing for the rest of the game. You know? Yeah. So I would love to see them somehow be able to tackle that, right? They don't even necessarily have to make it, like, super immersive in, like, a sandbox role-playing game sort of way, like a, like a Bethesda role-playing game. But, I don't know. It's just not much of a joy to explore the overworld compared to exploring the legacy dungeons, right? Like, every time we found... Like in Stormvale Castle, we found a secret loop around or a weird area that we thought was like, no way we can get to this or whatever. But you could, or like you fell down a rock and then, oh shit, I'm still alive and I got somewhere fucking wild as hell. Or like in Landel, where like you, there was so much shit in Landel, it was buck wild, right? That was wild. That was some of the best exploration that these games have ever had, right? Whereas, I, I don't know, maybe inversely, some of the worst is just the, the plain open world shit, right? Just running around. The running around just isn't... Maybe it feels extra bad because the dungeon experience is so fucking good, right? But, you know, there's no, like, fun little story or whatever in every cave or what or whatnot... There's no interesting, super cool mechanic. And a lot of the bosses and stuff are reused in the little dungeons and stuff, you know? Which is all right. Right? I mean, what can you do? It's such a huge-ass game. What really can you fucking do? Right? I don't mind that, that they're reused. It's just... I don't know. There's such a marked difference between how much fun certain things are, right? Like, some of the catacombs eventually got really fucking cool, but toward the middle there, it was starting to be like, okay, the catacombs again, all right. But then they started working in these weird puzzles and, like, mind games and, like, weird optical illusions with the catacombs, and that was fucking rad. And the Heroes Graves dungeons reliably were fucking balls-to-the-wall awesome as shit. Each one, I think each one, had, like, a secret to it uh, that involved some sort of fun mechanic or you learn something new. Right, or there was like a new sort of encounter, you know, like finding one of the gigantic killdozers. Uh-oh. Holy shit, you can blow them up, as it turns out. How fucking cool is that? That was rad as hell. Right? All of the best exploration moments happened in very structured moments in the game, right? I don't know if there were any cool, <laughs> super cool exploration moments purely in the open world, other than seeing like oh fuck, look over there. It's a really cool structured area that I'm about to go to. <laughs> Right? It, it very much serves as just like, yeah, you're just gonna make your way through this, you know? I don't know how you get around it with their style, right? Because as much as I would love for them to just, like, start shoving systems into the open world, the, the field and all that, the field gameplay, they've never been that kind of a, a development house, have they? To where they just have lots of weird interacting systems like that. They've been like, you know... Some tight-ass level design, some tight-ass combat design. That's been their strength. Maybe they can go beyond it, right? Who knows? Now that they've made so much money off of Elden Ring, who fucking knows what the future holds, right? Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, okay. <laughs> I think finally I'm done talking about Elden Ring. All right, yeah. If they do DLC, I'll probably play it. Unless I've, like, accidentally made a New Game Plus character. 
I've like gone into New Game Plus, and that has like fucked me in some way. <laughs> like, like uh oh, I activated New Game Plus to get another duplicate hammer at some point, and now I can't access the DLC that's come out. We'll probably do the DLC, right? Maybe it won't be as soon as it comes out. I don't know. It depends on when it comes out. And like I said, they may not even do it because it's such a uniquely massive game compared to what they've done in the past. And for example, in the case of Sekiro, they didn't have DLC, right? But Sekiro was also kind of a weird example because it was published by Activision instead of um, Bandai Namco, I think. I want to say. Who is their usual publisher for all their games since I think Dark Souls 1, probably even before it. Armored Core or Kingsfield. Cookies and cream. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah. The the future is, is bright for FromSoft. I wonder what it holds. Alright. Well, thanks for watching the Elden Ring playthrough. Thanks for watching all of it. Or even just this one part. Even if you just skip to the end just to hear what I had to say. Part of me wonders if these, like, big end of game... Like, where I sort of surmise, try to surmise my thoughts about the entire playthrough. Part of me wonders if I should just cut all these out and put them in their own sort of standalone series. Just do it very raw. And just do it like... Like, who, who... Someone else does something like that. Who is it? Is it fucking... I think it's Co Carnage, right? He does something similar to that. He cuts out his thoughts on the game series. Maybe I should do something like that. I don't know, because I got I've I've been doing them there. Maybe I should just come out that way. They're more findable, you know, for people who want to find them. That said, we do get very spoiler heavy, right? I guess I could put up like a big text warning, or just record like additional stuff like yeah, this is after I finish the game talking about spoilers here, right? I could do that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Even just this, if you did, uh, thanks for everybody who uh, liked the videos, uh, you know, subscribed or commented and whatnot. I do read all the comments. This one was a bit of a weird one, right? Elden Ring playthrough was a bit of a weird one because it came out and I recorded so far ahead, right? Normally, there is more interaction between comments and me playing the game because it's more back and forth, you know? This was very different. I'm not sure if I'll do it again that way, right? I might do it again for Starfield when that comes out because I'm just so fucking excited. But maybe I'll, like, lay off on it. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how I'll handle Starfield yet. If you have any ideas about that, let me know. Right? Because it definitely seems like folks seem to appreciate being able to, to write in and hear me read out what they had to say or whatever. Right? Although I do read all the comments, right? It, it kind of was, like, a, a situation where, you know, I was so far ahead and people didn't know how far ahead I was. You know? Um... Other situations like this, though, I was thinking if we ever went that what this did inspire was a good idea, not just only more questions, but it did inspire a, a good idea. Is like if we went and did another playthrough of a game we've already played or a game that I have already played, I'm super familiar with it, right? Maybe I just like one in which viewer input isn't super duper necessary, right? A situation where viewer input just isn't that that pertinent to me, right? And it, and maybe maybe also borrowed from being like Elder Scrolls or Fallout, right? Cuz you know, those are those have kind of worked their way into being mainstays for the channel, right? Which thankfully I really do enjoy those games. But um barring all that, maybe I just record the entire playthrough ahead of time. And just drop it all at fucking once. What if I did that? How fucking buck wild would that be? Right? Like, I, I would have the first video come out and that published to your sub feeds. But I should be able to, because I think I experiment. Yeah, I experimented around this with shorts. There's like a toggle, a checkbox that you can have. And I just turn off the checkbox for all the other videos. And I just put them out like, like, I don't know, I schedule them to come out like, 10 minutes or something after the first one, right? And it just keeps staggering itself out. So then people can just watch it if they want to, right? Huh. That, like, that's that's something that I've been thinking about. Maybe that's something that I do for, like, especially in the case of, like, oh, uh, not too long ago, I was hankering to play The Outer Worlds and its DLC, 
right? What if I did that for that game, right? Instead of trying to work it into a usual sort of slot that we have, what if I just record it all in my free time? And then once I finally got finished with it, right? That way I could, I would have more flexibility to like take a break if I needed to, instead of needing to like continually keep recording every, every day. Um, I could just take a break and then whenever I finally finish the entire playthrough, then start, then put it all out at once, right? Publish to sub feeds the first one and then say at the end of that, like, by the way, they're all fucking out. They're all fucking out there and you can go check out the playlist and just watch them all and enjoy them if you want, right? Maybe. And then maybe the way you supplement that is like, if there's any neato moments in there, turn those into shorts. Right? And have those come out slowly over time. Right? Huh. Yeah, I didn't even think about the shorts aspect. Yeah. Definitely a possibility. Speaking of shorts, after... <laughs> now that I'm done with Elden Ring, I guess I can go back to making more Skyrim shorts <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, depending on how those go, uh, probably go pretty well. Might send uh, the channel over 100k, right? <laughs> That'd be fucking wild. It's funny. It, <laughs> I've noticed like some viewers have started to clue in on just like, just how fucking lazy is this guy? This guy, clearly Lyle recognizes that if he put out more shorts, he would get to a hundred grand, but he is just not doing it. There are some really funny moments in these Skyrim openings that are already clipped up perfect for turning into a short and he just ain't doing it. That's just how lazy I am, right? <laughs> Look, I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> I'll gladly shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. What else is there? Yeah, thanks. Sh shit, what a fucking tangent. <laughs> thanks for watching all the videos. Thanks for liking. Uh, disliking, I guess, helps as well. Uh, thanks for leaving comments. I read them all, even if I don't seem like it. I definitely do read them all. Even the mean ones, even the, the sad ones. It makes me cry, but I read them. I still read them. The only ones I don't read are the ones that uh, sometimes get auto-filtered by spam filters and whatnot. Sometimes I don't see those. Though I do try to check the spam filter at least once a week. Uh, thanks for folks who decided to sub, who rang the bell. Thanks, folks, who hit me up on Patreon. Appreciate that. It's a super optional thing. You get nothing for hitting me up on Patreon. It's just like tipping. And in a similar vein... Thanks anybody who did tip via a one-time sort of deal, via like PayPal or coffee, stuff like that. We've got a few of those on the channels about page and whatnot, or the quick link zone that I've started using this year, right? Or was that toward the end of last year? I don't remember. But regardless, thanks for folks who did that. It does really super duper help a bunch. Um, hmm. Let's see. And also, it is a really bad deal for you, so don't do it unless you really want to tip, and you really can, right? <laughs> Try to dis disincentivize you unless you really have the means to do it, right? I don't want it to, to be, like, pressure on you. I want it to be available. I want to maximize availability. And also, like I said, I'm lazy. I just want less work for me, too. <laughs> right? Come on. <laughs> Look, that's time that I could be fucking around making a short, or fucking around playing a fucking game. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm terrible. All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching all this stuff. Ooh, gosh, we're getting a little hitchy right here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks. It, it's really good when you do that. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Uh, wow, some people just have this down and they just say it, you know? They, it, they've just committed to memory. But I tend to only say these and reserve these for, like, uh, the Morrowind Annual or at the end of a playthrough <laughs> or when something kind of big has happened on the channel, right? Something along those lines. I'll say it then. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, for doing what you do. Even just watching, even if you're just lurking around and watching, that helps as well. Appreciate it. It's it's nice to to have all that going on. To have folks watching. It's such a fucking honor that you would want to spend your free time watching my dumb ass going around. I hope you you had some fun with it. Hope uh hope it took away some of the stress of of real life lately and all that stuff. Right? What a season. Thanks so much. Hope you hope you had a good one. Hope I'll see you around for. 
I don't know. Did you see? Bloodborne remastered from Bluepoint, remastered by Bluepoint, people who did the Demon Souls remaster. It's coming to PC next year. Did you see that? I think that was real. I think that was real, or something, or an elaborate ruse. <laughs> we'll probably do that. And guess what? That's not that long of a game. It's nowhere near as long as this, right? We'll probably do that. Uh, it seems like a good one to do. Could be good fun. Uh, maybe we'll even do it in that weird way that I just described not too long ago. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, maybe I'll see you back for that, or maybe I'll see you for Skyrim, or Morrowind Mondays, or uh, whatever CRPG we happen to be doing. Probably still doing Fallout 1 by the time this comes out. Um, all that sort of business. Maybe I'll finally get back to streaming. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No promises. No promises. I hate working and shit. Sheesh. <laughs> Look, I just want happiness. <laughs> all right. Uh, what else? Huh. Is that it? I think that's it. What? Is there something else I'm supposed to say? I don't know. I thanked all the nice folks. Uh, wish you farewells. Good luck. I asked my questions to the to the audience and stuff early on in this. Yeah. It just feels weird because we're not looking at a scrolling screen and say I'm doing what I used to do in World of Warcraft like 10 years ago. I used to just jump around whenever I was talking to my friends. I don't know. Just like some weird sort of busy work to occupy my my fingers or whatever while I'm speaking, right? I don't know. Such a weird habit I've taken on from those days. But, uh, yeah. Appreciate it so much. Elden Ring. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks. Bye. But please, take care of each other. You know, have be nice. Be good. Unless someone is being like a just just complete asshole then fuck him but otherwise you know try to try to <laughs> try to be nice to people try to look at other people's perspectives and stuff unless it's a really fucked up like racist sexist or some other bigoted position or whatever then fuck him <laughs> sorry we're really going off the rails uh yeah well have a good one we're Elden ringing out of here Bye. Take care of each other. Bye. 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 Be safe. Have have a good time. Enjoy everything that there is to enjoy. Maybe there'll be DLC for this game that people will like. Who knows? Who knows? Bloodborne 2 in 2023. That said, it may not happen in 2023 on this channel because at 2023, that's Starfield year for me, baby. After that delay. All right. Bye. Bye. Please. Take care of each other. Bye. Have a good one. Rather than going backward. Oh, shit! <laughs> He's hitting his own noggin against the wall. That's how hungry he is for shit. I can't believe a fucking meteor, like, hit this planet, and I don't even know where it landed at. Oh, shit. It's got magic. Oh, it's flying. Oh, it's quite pissed. Oh! 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 O oh, Tarnish, do the Erd Tree leaves fall upon your helm every night as they do tonight? <gasps> oh, hole ahead. Castle Blood Hole! <laughs> this is the beginning of the fucking game! Ah! What if I free him from his shit prison, he gets out, and he starts going around finding all the other NPCs in the world and eating their shit too, and then killing them and eating their shit again? <laughs> oh, shit! Wow, look at him go! A stealth natural- Oh! This is an alien. This is an alien. Oh, fuck, it is! <laughs> no! Oh, God, it really is! She peaced out. She fucking peaced out like that fucking gif. I can't, I can't let him leave. He's gonna kill everybody and eat their shit. I thought I was about to go fucking skidding off the side there. Jesus, Pete. Ooh, like this! Ah, fuck! <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Wow. Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> Goad Freud, the craft. What the fuck? Oh God, what are you doing? I'm dead. <laughs> Oh, it's on me! Under a long-standing tradition. Oh, are we married now? I need to eat the shit of the shit eater. I'm powering up.